So, colleagues, I think we, we can start now. It's my pleasure to present to you the talk by Professor Winfried Zikel from Jena University, Germany. And he will speak about the regularity of characteristic functions. Please, Professor. Thank you very much. First of all, let me thank the organizers of this seminar for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to speak about a topic which I like. So I came on at least two different ways to this topic. From time to time, I have given lectures where function spaces of fractional order of smoothness showed up. And then there is a need for simple examples which have exactly one of these fractal smoothness, but not a higher smoothness. And then characteristic function are simple enough to serve. Another way, a more serious way on which I came to this problem is a problem of pointwise multipliers. So I was interested in this topic since at least since 1985. So a pointwise multiplier, say, of a nikolsky besov space is a function with a property if you multiply any function from a given nikolsky besov space with this specific function, then you end up with a function again in the same space. So and then you may ask for a simplified situation, namely that the multiplier itself is a characteristic function. So and that is quite interesting and still rather complicated. And say historically, it has its origin in interpolation theory. There was a need for the characteristic function of the half plane to understand whether this is a multiplier or not. If you look for a measurable set E, non-trivial, and say with finite measure, then it's obvious that a function belongs to LP and it does not belong to the Sobolev space. In addition, it does also not belong to any Hölder space. But if you think on different domains, there is a clear feeling that these characteristic functions are of different regularity depending on the quality of the boundary. So one needs some sort of function spaces with fractional order of smoothness. And here I have decided for nikolsky besov spaces because in, situ in this situation, I know most about this subject. But one could have chosen also the sorting tribal spaces. So the original motivation to consider nikolsky besov spaces comes from two classical problems, at least two. Here I have just picked up these two formulas. The first one is an interpolation formula. The method is real interpolation. So the real interpolation of two Sobolev spaces leads to a nikolsky besov space, where the parameters have to be connected as indicated. And that means that Besser spaces may be used to fill in the gaps between these two Sobolev spaces with smoothness m minus one and m. And the other application is connected with a trace operator. If you look for this trace on a hyperplane, then one knows that this operator maps a Sobolev space with smoothness M onto the Nikolsky Besov space with smoothness M minus one over P, now defined, of course, on RD minus one. There are classical examples why Besov Nikolsky Besov spaces are quite natural to deal with. Most important for me are differences. So Besov spaces can be characterized in various ways, but for today, differences are most useful. So if you have a parameter S between 0 and M, 
m is a given natural is a natural number which we may choose then a function f in lp belongs to the Bessel space with parameters s p q if and only if this integral here is finite and here we compare the lp norm of the m's order difference of f with the absolute value of h so this is a shift appearing in the difference to the power minus s and then this integral has to be finite in most of the of my talk i will only deal with a case m equals one that means s between zero and one so let me start with a simple example so we concentrate on s between zero and one then a function f belongs to the nikolsky bessoff space with q equals infinity if this quantity here is finite. That means we have the LP norm of the first order difference multiplied by absolute value of H to the minus S. And it's enough to take the supremum over absolute value of H between zero and one. And let X be the characteristic function of the interval zero one. That means we are in the one dimensional situation. And let us choose the shift H positive and less than one. Then it's quite easy to calculate this integral here. We need to look for two situations. In the first situation, x belongs to the segment and, and x plus h not. And in the second situation, x plus h belongs to the segment and x not. So it's immediate that we have this identity and that means the LP norm of the first order difference is just two times H to the power one over P. So this needs to be compared with the absolute value of H to the power minus S, which is simple and we get a final result. So the characteristic function of the interval zero one belongs to the nikolsky bessoff space with smoothness S, integrability P, and fine index Q equals infinity if and only if S is less than or equal to 1 over P. So the characteristic function of an interval is if, in case 1 is less than P is less than infinity, an example with which shows that the use of fractional order of smoothness makes sense. So this if and only if relation extends also to P equals one. But then we need another um, argument because in that case, if P is equal one and S is equal one, that would be the maximal regularity. We have to deal here with a second order difference. This problem will show up several times, but I will not speak about the technicalities which are connected with this. But it's never or almost never a deep argument. So this can be extended also to P equals one, this if and only if relation. So now I come to the point how smooth are characteristic functions in general. So I'm more interested in the multidimensional case than in the one dimensional. So for convenience, I denote by F the complement of E. And for a shift H, we define the two sets. E of H is just the set of all X in E such that the shift does not belong to E and F of H is the set of all X belonging to the complement such that X plus H is not in F. And then this integral, this LP norm of the first order difference to the power P can be calculated as in the one dimensional example before. This is just the integral on the sets E of H and F of H. So it's equal to the sum of these two volumes. 
when I write absolute value of a set, then I mean the Lebesgue measure of the set. So we need to compare this with powers of H, powers of absolute values of H. And then we get the first very simple but useful lemma. So let P between one and infinity, P equals one is admissible, and let S strictly between zero and, and one. This is because we have used the first order difference only. Then the characteristic function of a set E belongs to this nikolsky besov space with Q equals infinity, if and only if this quantity here is finite. So later I will also show that these characterization extends to the particular case P equals one and S equals one. But this, this will be done later. So a trivial consequence of this situation of this lemma here, the first lemma, is the following. Let P be strictly between 1 and infinity and S between 0 and 1. Then the characteristic function belongs to the Besov space with P equals 1 and S equals infinity. If and only if the best of space, uh, sorry, the characteristic function belongs to the best of space with smoothness S over P, P infinity. So this, is a, this shows an interesting interplay between regularity with respect to P equals one and regularity with respect to P strictly larger than one. So if you might, if you take this assertion here to this expression to the power p, then you see as long as a product s times p is constant, nothing is changed. And this is expressed by this fact here. So I will try during my talk to give as many examples as pos possible. So let us have a look for a ball and for a rectangle. Then we take a shift, so that means a special value h. We are in the two-dimensional situation, so this is a vector maybe in this direction here. And so we have the original domain, and this is a shifted domain, and we are interested in the symmetric difference, or more exactly, we are interested in the volume of this symmetric difference. And the same here then it's practically, practically visible that in these two situations, we have that the volume of E of H plus the volume of F of H, that means in both cases of these two sets here, or of these two, that they are uh, equivalent to the absolute value of H. And by using our lemma one, it's quite easy to show with a little supplement in case P equals one and S equals one, that the characteristic function of the segment zero one belongs to the best of space B S P infinity on R if and only if S is less than or equal one over P. So this shows that the characteristic function has a maximal regularity of one over P, and this is uh, attained in case Q equals infinity. And this generalizes to the multidimensional case. The characteristic function of either a ball or a cuboid is, belongs to the nikolsky besov space on RD now with parameters S, P, and Q equals infinity if and only if S is less than or equal one over P. So that gives us a first orientation. So there are simple examples of very simple sets and the maximal regularity is one over P. How is it in general? Can the regularity be higher than one over P? So here, half of the answer is written in the title the limiting case S equals one over P. I would like to begin with recalling a classical result by Titchmarsh from the one dimensional situation, which has been generalized by Gulli Sashvili. 
to the general case, let us take a fixed ball in Rd, and then we take a locally integrable function u, satisfying that the uh, one norm of the, sh of the first order difference on B multiplied by one over the absolute value of H tends to zero if H is tending to zero. Then the conclusion is that this function is constant almost everywhere on B. We will apply this with, we will take U equals the characteristic function of the set E and we assume that the ball B not only contains E itself, but also a neighborhood of E, say, in such a way that as long as H is less than one, the support of this function, characteristic function of E X plus H is still in B. And if we have this situation, then we get that the function must be constant almost everywhere on B, and that would be a contradiction because it will take values 0 and 1 there. And that means that E must be trivial. In addition, we shall use a very simple but very useful observation. So if you consider the integral over B with respect to the absolute value of the first order difference of a characteristic function. This is the same than considering the integral on B with respect to the absolute value of the first order difference taking, taken to the power P, whatever P is. The reason for that is quite simple. So if you look for the range of the first order difference, then what can happen? So the value zero may happen, the value one, and the value minus one. So altogether, the absolute value is either one or zero, and P has no influence. And taking these two arguments together, you get a first interesting result, which goes back to Uli Sashvili. If P is larger than or equal to one and less than infinity and Q is larger than or equal to one and less than infinity, then there is no subset E with finite positive measure such that the characteristic function of E belongs to the nikolsky besov space with smoothness one over P, integrability P and fine index Q. Here Q has to be strictly less than infinity. So the, the basic observation here is as follows. Say 1 over P is between 0 and 1, then we, dealing, we are dealing with a first order difference for, characterize, for characterizing this nikolsky besov space. And it's Easily seen, you may use the characterization of this Bessel space by modulus of continuity of first order. That this quantity, the LP norm of the first order difference multiplied by one over the absolute value of H to the power one over P, that this has to tend to zero uh, for a function to belong to this space. So quite a number of simple arguments lead to this observation and let me reformulate this once again. So within the nikolsky besov class spaces, the classes B1 over P, P infinity are the smallest in which we can find non-trivial characteristic functions or with other words, B1 over P, P infinity represents the maximal regularity a characteristic function may have. So remember the examples we have seen before, the characteristic function of cubes or balls, that are examples which have this maximal regularity. They are in a certain sense easy uh, characteristic functions. 
But there is another space which is of interest in this context, and this is BV, so the space of function of bounded variation. Clearly, the characteristic function of the segment 0, 1 belongs to BV. And the intersection of BV with L1 is a subset of B11 infinity R. Well, this can be shown quite easily. An extension to the d-dimensional case requires first the definition of the space on Rd, and this is standard. So a locally integrable function is of bounded variation if its first-order partial derivatives are bounded Borel measures. And we equip this space BV intersected with L1 with a norm. So we take the L1 norm and we add the total variations of these measures, partial derivative of f in the direction xj. So then I need the notion of a perimeter of a set. So E is a subset of Rd as usual. Then first look at this limit here. The, we look for sequences of sets mj such that the corresponding characteristic functions approach in the L1 sense the characteristic function of E. And then we look for the Hausdorff, for the d minus one dimensional Hausdorff measure of the surface or of the boundary of these mj. And the uh, limit Lemus inferior is then the parameter of the set E. Let us have a look for the most simple example. You may take a domain in R2 with a polygonal boundary. So as long as this polygonal boundary is simple, that means you have only uh, a finite number of points where this boundary is not analytic, then you get just as a result that the parameter is the length of the boundary. And there's a classical formula which relates the BV norm of a function with a parameter. So this goes back to the early 60s, but another good reference would be the Springer book of Burago and Zalgalar. And in this yellow series on geometric inequalities. So when you plug in here, so when you choose f as a characteristic function of a set E, then this formula simplifies very much. And you get that the characteristic function of a set E belongs to BV if and only if it has a finite parameter. And this is a very useful formula. So now we need to connect this knowledge with nikolsky besov spaces. And the way how to connect this is well known in the long time. So in D equals one, it was Hardy Littlewood in 84. At least this is a reference I have used. It was Guli Sashvili. If E is a measurable set in RD, say with finite volume, then there exists two constants, C1 and C2, such that the parameter of E can be estimated from below and above. By the following supremum, we take T to the minus one times the first order modulus of continuity of the characteristic function with respect to the parameter T. So that gives you immediately a relation to the best of spaces with p equals one. Uh, if we want to choose as suggested, suggest, or as suggested here, the smoothness s equals one, then of course there is an additional difficulty that we do not get directly a characterization, but we are close to. And so the difference here between first order modulus of, diff, uh, of smoothness and second order modulus of smoothness is not that big. Let me skip this technicality and just come to the first main result. 
So in this result deals with a limiting case S equals 1 over P. Let us take a measurable set such that the volume is strictly larger than zero and less than infinity. Then we know already that the characteristic function belongs to L1. And then the following assertions are equivalent. So we have a finite parameter. This implies that the characteristic function belongs to BV on RD. This, as we have seen before, means that the characteristic function belongs to B1, 1 infinity. And if you know that it belongs to B1, 1 infinity, it's not difficult to show that it belongs to all spaces B1, P, P infinity, where all means P may be chosen freely between 1, including 1, and infinity. So this is mainly a result of Guli Sashvili from two papers in 84 and 85, but the material has been also considered in the book of Mazia and Shaposhnikova on multipliers, which has appeared in 1985 as well. So here we have some nice characterization of the set sets E, which are in this sense of maximal regularity, which means that the characteristic function is in these smallest nikolsky besov space, spaces. Now let me turn to examples. So I started quite simple. Let us look for so-called elementary Lipschitz domains. So this is not the same as uh, defined in Stein's book from 1970. I have taken here a notion from the book of Viktor Burenkov on Sovolev spaces. Let me explain this a little bit. We start with W. W is a rectangle in Rd minus 1. And then our set E is a set of all pairs X prime Xd, such that X prime belongs to the rectangle W and xd is between these two values, so larger than a constant ad and less than the value of the function phi at the point x prime. And what we need in addition is that this function phi is a Lipschitz function. And the two other uh, conditions are just useful technical conditions. So we, I just spoke about the elementary Lipschitz domains, and then the result is, if we have such an elementary Lipschitz domain, then it's bounded by definition, and this characteristic function has a maximal regularity it may have. So basic, this is quite easy to show. Basic properties of nikolsky besov spaces uh, yield the following. So this time we take a finite number of pairwise disjoint domains and we make glue them together. Then uh, also a finite number of rotations is allowed, translations and reflections. And so the resulting domain is just a union of this uh, n different characteristic function. Then we get, just by the fact that uh, this space is a linear space and this as well, that the corresponding characteris characteristic function has this maximal regularity. By the way, the easiest way to prove this lemma here is just to use our first lemma, where we have estimated these sets E of H and F of H, or better to say the volume of these sets. So now let me turn to some examples. So the first example, figure two, is just an example for the corollary which I had shown before. You may decompose this set into a finite number of elementary Lipschitz domains. 
For figure three, such a decomposition is not necessary. This is a polyhedral cone, and this is an elementary Lipschitz domain. For the eicosaeda, we have to argue like in case of figure two. We have first to decompose it into a finite number of elementary Lipschitz domains, and then we get the result. In all three cases, these characteristic functions have maximal regularity. What about necessity of uh, the Lipschitz character of the boundary? So this is a special polyhedral domain, maybe all you know it, which is not Lipschitz. So the critical point is a red dot here. And of course, there are three more. But if you look for this domain, you take a shift in an arbitrary direction of length absolute value of H, and you check the volume of the symmetric difference. Then you see, again, it's quite easy applying our first lemma that this has also maximal regularity uh, without being a domain with a Lipschitz boundary. So here are two more examples. So the first one, the blue domain, is just the asteroid in the plane. So in these four points, it is not Lipschitz. But if you use the same argument as used before, that means we look for the volume of the symmetric difference with a shift, then you see also this two-dimensional domain has max, the characteristic function has maximal regularity. Now we let rotate this us three. This time the singular set is a circle and north and south pole. And again, if you use this argument with a shift and look for the volume of the symmetric difference, it's quite easy to see applying lemma one that this character or the corresponding characteristic function has again maximal regularity. Finally, let us take this very simple family of domains in R2 showing a cusp. It depends on the parameter epsilon. Epsilon, epsilon can be as small as we want. On the one hand, it's easily seen that it has finite parameter, but you can also argue with the argument from lemma one. Then you get immediately that the characteristic function of this yellow domain has again maximal regularity, but the smoothness of the boundary in sense of Hölder smoothness is just epsilon. So it can be as small as we want. So Lipschitz boundary is by no means necessary for maximal regularity of the corresponding characteristic function. So now let us turn to the case S strictly less than one over P. So one remark to a necessary condition. If we know that E is a bounded domain, then the characteristic function can only have positive smoothness if the Lebesgue measure of the boundary is zero. This is a minimal requirement those characteristic functions have to satisfy. There are further necessary conditions, in particular also by Jafar and Meyer in a in a memoirs in 1996, but maybe when I have time, I will speak about it at the end of my talk. When we come to sufficient conditions, it's quite mm, reasonable to deal with the so-called data neighborhood of the boundary. So this is just this set. And related to this data neighborhood is a notion from fractal geometry, which is called the S-dimensional upper Minkowski content of a set, which is defined as this. So we will apply this with A replaced by the boundary of E. So, sorry, recall we have introduced these sets E of H and F of H. Then it's trivial that the union of these two sets is a subset of the delta neighborhood as long as H has absolute value delta. 
and that immediately gives the following consequences. So the first one is just a reformulation of our first lemma. So if you have a set with finite measure, then this condition, so if the volume of this delta neighborhood decays at least of in order delta to the s, then the characteristic function belongs to this nikolsky besov space. And this can be uh, weakened a little bit by using the upper Minkowski content, and that reads as if the d minus s dimensional upper Minkowski content of the boundary is finite, then the characteristic function has this regularity. And that can be weakened again by replacing the upper Minkowski content by the Minkowski dimension. So if the Minkowski dimension of the boundary is d minus s, then the characteristic function has the regularity b s over p p infinity. So this is a well-known fact. Probably Strichard was the first who noticed the usefulness of the Minkowski content, but he traced it to Madich, and later this has applied by several people. So the question is, of course, whether this is sharp. And to, to get a more detailed result, uh, one may apply approximation by piecewise constant function. Therefore, let me introduce the dyadic cubes, Q, J, K. So J need to be a natural number or also zero, and K is the shift from the integers. Then we introduce the best approximation of a function of an LP function F by piecewise constant functions and they should, these functions G should belong to LP and G should be constant on these dyadic, on all dyadic cubes. Then it's well known in the long time that the function F belongs to a Nikolsky Besov space with parameters S, P and Q if and only if F belongs to LP and this sum here is finite. So here are at just two references. Of course, we need that S is strictly between 0 and 1 over P for this. And this can be applied quite easily to our situation. And then it turns out it's enough to deal with a subset of the delta neighborhood of the boundary. And for this subset, here we have a plus. And this is just a half of the delta neighborhood, namely this part which belongs to the set E itself. So the outside situation is ignored. And then one can show, proof is maybe half a page, quite simple. Let E be a bounded domain in RD. Let the parameters satisfy these natural conditions because we want to apply the characterization by these uh, approximation with piecewise constant functions. Then suppose either that this integral condition is finite if q equals uh, if q is strictly less than infinity, or if q equals infinity, that is supremum is finite. This condition we had used in the lemma before. Uh, so the theorem is just a generalization of the lemma before. The news are the cases q strictly less than infinity. Then. If this, uh, if this condition is satisfied, the characteristic function has again the regularity reflected by membership in the nikolsky besov space with parameters S, P and Q. So this is uh, the advantage of this result is that the parameter Q plays a role now. And not, we do not only deal with the case Q equals infinity. The question is, of course, is it sharp? And 
the answer is, as you maybe expect, yes and no. In some situations, at least, it is sharp. And therefore, I need, aha, uh -huh. later on, I will need from time to time to refer to the theorem. I have forgotten to give them a number. So I will refer it as a theorem on approximation. quasi balls. So a K quasi ball is an image of the unit ball under a K quasi conformal mapping. So if D equals two, it's also called quasi circle. And then one can improve the previous theorem. So uh, the norm of a characteristic function where the set E is a K quasi ball can be characterized as follows. So the, the norm is equivalent to this quantity. So this is the quantity as shown up in the theorem on approximation in the particular case P equals Q. And this is important for P not equal to Q, the arguments do not work. So it's open whether this extends to these cases, but at least there is no simple extension. And this is an if and only if condition now. If you have a quasi ball, then this is if and only if, if we assume that the volume is finite. This has been shown by Farago and Rogers, and they used heavily the machinery of K quasi conformal mappings to prove this. This is a highly non trivial result. So now I turn to examples for the case as strictly less than one over P. The first one, let me introduce elementary domains with Helder continuous boundary. In the previous definition, we just change the regularity of the function phi, which describes the boundary. So we introduce a power alpha here, and alpha of course has to be, has to be between zero and one. And then, as you maybe expect, the outcome is as follows. If E is such an elementary domain with Helder continuous boundary of order alpha, then the characteristic function of the of the set belongs to the best of space with uh, with smoothness alpha over P, integrability P and infinity for all P. So the proof uses the theorem on approximation. So there is no, no need to consider quasi balls here, but this will happen with the next example. So the most beautiful example is a snowflake domain. So you all know the construction of the Van Gogh curve. We start with a triangle with uh, sides having equal size, equal lengths. Then we decompose each side into three parts of equal length. We introduce these new triangles there, and then we iterate. And then this procedure converges. So the outcome is the so-called snowflake domain and the boundary is a Van Gogh curve. So this is, of course, a fractal subject. And there is a number of properties which are well known in the literature. So uh, this set, this snowflake domain is an epsilon infinity domain. It is at the same time a Joan domain. It is a quasi ball, which is most important for us, it is, but it is also a self similar jet set. And it is also known that the Hausdorff dimension of the boundary equals the Minkowski dimension of the boundary equals logarithm four or logarithm three, which is obviously strictly larger than one. So here are a few names which have contributed to this. So Falconer and Matilla are standard books for fractal geometry. There you can find this formula about the dimensions. And Meyer, this is not the famous Meyer, has shown in 2010 that the snowflake domain is a quasi ball, and this can be applied. 
So and then the outcome as a corollary of this quasi-ball theorem is as follows. The characteristic function of the snow deflake domain belongs to BSPP in R2 if and only if S is strictly less than 1 over P 2 minus logarithm 4 over logarithm 3. Please remember the structure of the upper bound. 2 refers to the dimension of the space we are considering the domain in. And this here, this is the Minkowski or Hausdorff dimension. So the if part I had shown in a paper more than 20 years ago, but applying this theorem on approximation. Jafar and Meyer had a slightly different argument, but getting the same. And Farago and Rochas with the quasi-ball argument, they would have been able to show if and only if. And this is the first situation where we have an if and only if uh, condition in case that the fine index is not infinity, but it has to be P. Based on this corollary, it's not, oh, sorry, it's not difficult to show that the characteristic function of the snowflake domain belongs to the nikolsky besov space with fine index Q equals infinity, if and only if a different condition holds. Now the strict inequality is replaced by less than or equal to. So of course it would be desirable to have a characterization of the maximal regularity with respect to all Q, not only to infinity, and P, but this is partly open. By embeddings, one gets immediately some part of this assertion, but not all. There's another example, so the twin dragon. This is a space filling curve with a fractal boundary. Relatives are highway dragon or levy dragon. And I have seen it for the first time more than 20 years ago, because it can be used as a scaling function in wavelet theory. So the twin dragon has also some nice properties. So if T is a set filled by this core curve and this is the boundary, then one knows that the fractal dimension, the Hausdorff dimension, as well as the Minkowski dimension of this um, boundary is delta, where delta is a unique solution of this quant of this equation, and delta is approximately 1.5. So this you may find in the famous book by Mandelbrot. And then it turns out, just by applying our uh, theorem and approximation, that the characteristic function of this twin dragon has regularity 2 minus delta divided by p. So we, we have here the usual structure. This is a dimension of this space R2, and we have to subtract from this the Hausdorff or Minkowski dimension, and then we have divided by P. The question here, which I cannot answer, is whether this is sharp. This I don't know. Ah, let me skip this because time is running. So one could conjecture from these two examples, twin dragon and snowflake domain, that a characteristic function has the regularity BSP infinity and S has to be calculated in this form, one over P times D minus the Minkowski dimension or minus the Hausdorff dimension. That this cannot be true in general, of course, follows from the fact that there are sets E such that the Minkowski dimension differs from the Hausdorff dimension. So the Minkowski dimension is in general larger than. But there is an easy example to show that both notions of fractal dimensions do not help in general. So there is a generalized Nicodemus domain. If you remember the book of Mazia on Sobolev spaces, which has appeared in 85, so the old one, then on the cover was a shark type domain. And this is quite similar. 
what I have in mind is we have a rectangle and we take away a strip. And the strip is generated by means of two parameters. So on the one side, we have the size. The size is of these sets A and B is generated by means of these parameters BJ. And the difference of two consecutive numbers BJ is just one over J to the alpha. So alpha has to be strictly larger than one. And there's another uh, parameter, this is gamma, and gamma controls the size of the strip in the x direction. So what I have in mind is are two comps where the teeth are coming closer and closer to each other and the teeth are getting thinner all the time. So because of alpha is strictly larger than one, this converges to a limit here. And then one can show that these sets, E alpha gamma, these two parameter sets, they have the following properties. The Minkowski dimension of the boundary is one plus one over alpha. Uh, the Hausdorff dimension, as well as the packing dimension, is equal to one. And the smoothness of the characteristic function in the nikolsky besov spaces with smoothness S, P, and Q equals infinity is just given by this inequality. S times P has to be less than or equal to 1 minus 1 over gamma. So this is calculated by hand. If Q is strictly less than infinity, then we get that this characteristic function belongs to if and only if SP is now strictly less than 1 minus 1 over gamma. If you remember the structure of the smoothness as mentioned before several times. So 1 over B D minus the Minkowski dimension is just 1 over P 2 minus 1 plus 1 over alpha. This is obviously strictly less than 1 over p times 1 minus 1 over gamma, because gamma is strictly larger than alpha. This is obviously strictly larger than 1 over p 2 minus 1. And this is exactly 1 over p times d minus Hausdorff dimension of E alpha gamma. That means, in general, both notions of fractal dimensions, Minkowski and Hausdorff, uh, do not reflect the smoothness of the characteristic functions in terms of nikolsky besov spaces. So in some sense, this uh, question about the smoothness of the characteristic function in terms of Besov spaces is something else. It does not coincide with the usual notion notions used in fractal geometry. So because of time, sorry for being late, I would like to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for the very interesting talk and, and which contains beautiful examples. Thank you. So if there are questions now, please. Please uh, remember that your microphones are... Professor, Professor Samko has a question. Okay, uh, yes, please, Stefan Grigorich. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, say that uh, it was really very interesting talk, which I listened to with a very big uh, pleasure. Uh, let me um, ask the following. Uh, this problem of regularity of um, um, characteristic functions uh, exists also for other uh, fractional spaces, for example, for basic potential spaces or risk potential spaces. Uh, could you comment something on that? Uh, up to my knowledge. So I had a look on basal potential spaces as well, but the, the knowledge is limited. A few of the arguments, of course, carry over. 
yeah. but not all. Sometimes the fine index Q really plays a role and some techniques are really different. So there is uh, one necessary condition, maybe let me show, uh, of Jafar and Meyer. So you look for a particular subset of the boundary, in some sense a regular subset. Then they have shown that the characteristic function of E belongs to this best of space with smoothness S, P, P, for some S and P implies that the packing dimension of this regular subset satisfies this inequality. And uh, this sometimes f fits quite well with the theorem on approximation or the theorem on quasi balls, but not always. And the argument used here that could be transferred also to the situation uh, of Bessel potential spaces because they need that P is equal to Q. So you can rearrange the norms that you have outside an LP norm, which happens as well in case of Bessel potential spaces. But on the other hand, the other way around, the uh, approximation argument, which I had used in the theorem on approximation, becomes more difficult. Probably one has to switch from approximation to characterization by by har uh, by har functions. I'm not sure whether this helps to get a replacement. So there is some partial knowledge, but rather incomplete for Bessel potential spaces. Yes, that's true. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. More questions, please. Maybe I have one small question. Yeah, please. Well, it's a very important problem of um, connected with the characteristic function, but I have a question. Maybe I skipped something. But do you have calculations of norm of characteristic function in case it belongs to a space? Or maybe estimation of norm of characteristic function when domain is when the domain is squeezing, for instance? Uh, what do you mean by this? I mean, the, the norm of characteristic function is very important in some questions of um, function spaces when you speak about rearranging invariant envelopes of, of such type of spaces. So knowing, knowing the behavior of norm of characteristic function, you can make some uh, conclusions on um, uh, properties of the spaces. And what but was your question? The question, do, do you have calculation or maybe estimation of um, norm of characteristic function in your spaces? Yeah, so these, when you remember the uh, sufficient condition in theorem and approximation, then the quantity showing up there, so the mm. integral with respect to the delta neighborhoods. So this gives you an upper estimate of the norm of the characteristic function. Okay. And in case of quasi balls, you have even equivalent, but not in general. Well, it's, it's very important, especially when domain is squeezing, when the measure of domain go, goes to zero. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. So if there are more questions or comments, please. <laughs> Uh, I am uh, very, very happy that I can participate this very important seminar. So thank you really, Alex. Um, I'm very happy to see Stefan and Natasha also. And, uh, and also I congratulate the speaker Sickel for an excellent talk. I'm really interested in uh, this subject. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, may I ask? Yes. Uh, Winfried, I'm, yes. Glad, yes. I'm glad to see you and to hear you. Uh, is it known something uh, for uh, Nikolsky Bessel spaces with generalized smoothness? Not uh, S, but some 
more general function determining uh, smoothness property of the space. So first of all, up to now, I have nothing seen. So what concerns the limiting case, S equals 1 over P, yeah. I would not expect an improvement in the framework of generalized uh, smoothness. But yeah. if S is strictly less than 1 over P, in some cases it may help. So there, there is a theory on so-called D sets. So that was introduced by Johnson and Wallin, I think, in his, in his book on function spaces on fractal sets. And this has been generalized by a student of Triebel with name Ricky. He introduced so-called H sets. And uh, when one looks for the irregularity of characteristic functions having a boundary which is sus such an H set, then it may really happen that it makes sense to consider Nikolsky Besov spaces of generalized smoothness. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. If there are other questions or comments. So if it's not the case, then thank you very much again, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe you allow me one more to show one more slide.